Hey guys and welcome to Slash for X Games. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a minimap. There are two ways you can do this, uh, one of which is just porting the entire game room to a small section of the graphic user interface. Um, as seen here on the left hand side, so we got the entire game room supported to the top left. The right hand side here, this is more of something that you'd actually want in your game. See, it's got transparency. If I go underneath it, see that? Go under it. There's a tiny version of myself right there, and you've got all these mobs going around. I mean, they have some AI, they've got some sort of intelligence. I don't know if I can call it intelligence. They are stupid as hell. But I've made them wander around and they hit the barrier and they freak out and change directions. Ah, they doing their own thing. On the most basic level, they're going to be wandering around simulating other players in our game. So, one of the big factors when porting the entire game room to a section of your of your GUI is, if I move the mouse onto any of the section, see? He's, he moves. Because actually what we're doing, this is not just a, a picture of, of the game room. It's actually the game room. So, wherever I put my mouse here in this small section is being mapped to the entire room where he is. See? We're just looking through a different view. So that's one problem. I mean, you don't really want to be having, you know, your top-down shooter and then the player puts his mouse on the minimap and it starts moving him around like that. We want the minimap to be a navigation tool. We don't want it to be the entire room. Just look at, look at this mob. He made it through the barrier. Oh, see? I told you. Not really great AI going there. Maybe he'll come back. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, so we don't want that to happen. So this is why this right hand side effort over here is way better. I mean we could see through it, it's not clouding up our entire room. Uh well our view right over there. And everything's being mapped correctly quite nicely. And it's sticking there using a draw GUI event. But ultimately you'd you'd want to stop your players from going through the borders of your room. But that's uh, it doesn't matter right now. So we're probably wondering how we go went about this. So in the first section of this well the first half of this tutorial I'm gonna be showing you how to do it the right way. And then I'm going to show you how to do it the other way, which is the way here on the left-hand side. Okay, so the right-hand side, that's what we really want. So basically what we're doing is we are creating the game room in the Game Maker's uh, room creator. And then we are taking a print screen, I know. We're taking a print screen, we're going to zoom out, we're going to take a print screen, then we're going to use some sort of editing tool, I mean Paintworks if you're in Windows. And we're going to cut that out, make sure that the resolution is the dimensions of it are the same as our room still. We're gonna, so we're going to cut that out, crop it, and we're going to add it as a sprite resource. And then all we're doing is we're creating a minimap object, or, yeah, and then we're creating an instance of that minimap object, and we are just drawing it onto our room, and that object is cycling through all the coordinates of these mobs and just placing them in the room. It's also taking my image angle and my position. See? Just like that. I'll follow this guy around. Pretty cool. He should probably go on top of those. But anyway, so that's what's happening right over there. So it's very simple. I mean, the lines of code are, psh, I don't know, maybe 30, 30 lines of code to accomplish all that. It's pretty interesting. So let's jump right into it and I'll show you how you can make this happen. So here we go. We've got our sprite player, our mob. He's wearing glasses now. He's kind of in a disguise, I think. And we've also got a crate. We're going to place these around the room, you'll see. And we've just created some objects for them. The player just has some movement using speed so that we can stop when we hit a crate, just like that. And our mob, oh, whoops, our mob has got some basic AI that says, well, when you created, choose a direction, choose a speed, and do this again in five seconds. And that's pretty much what it does, five seconds. It keeps doing that. Every five seconds it's changing its direction and speed, and it's making sure that it is pointing towards the direction it's facing. If it hits the boundary, it's supposed to change its direction and speed again. Um, doesn't matter. I haven't really looked much into, well, I haven't focused much on that AI. I just wanted things to move around so you could see. And the crate does nothing except prevent the player from going through it. Now, if we go into our room over here, so here's the game room. I've already populated it with objects. If we're going to zoom out, get rid of this grid. So there. Notice that this is the game room. We've put it all together, and then we've put crates around. So basically, all you do is take a print screen of this as it is now, but you remove all these players. So we delete all these. Delete our player. Make sure that the game room is only populated with uh, objects that are static. So these objects will not move. This is our, our game world. You know, map creation, that's what it's all about. So we take a print screen of this, just like it is. We're going to import it into Paint, and then we're going to cut out, you know, everything else. So we're going to cut out, you know, just this image. Make sure that our aspect ratio is, is pretty much the same. I mean, you want to make sure that you get the exact line there. You don't get any of this uh, transparency in the, the edge of your border. So you cut that out and you import it as, as you import it as a sprite resource. So um, for now, I'm going to put all my creatures back here a bunch of these out. And I'm going to say, okay. Then I'm going to go into sprites, create sprites. Here I'm going to say load sprites. And here, 
room map, this is my cutout image. So if I bring up that folder, whatever here, there it is, room map, make that bigger, see? So I just took a print screen of that and I cut it out. I mean, yeah, it's very low res, but that doesn't really matter. So I've cut out all everything else to make sure that we've only got the map right over there, and we can import this as a sprite resource. So we say yes, exit that, we want to import this, we say open. Now you can see it's much larger than our preview. Edit. I'm going to go into scale. We'll make this bigger first. I'm going to scale over here, and I'm say mm, 30%. Right, thirty percent should be fine. See, that's a good amount. I mean, it depends how much space you you've got on your on your actual view that you want to dedicate to this minimap. But remember, it's going to be transparent, so the player will be able to see through it. And you can add you can add some hotkeys to make it invisible or something. Or maybe if the player goes under that region, it can it can become more transparent. You know, so something like that. So we've got thirty percent. We're going to crop that. There it is. So okay, we're going to call this sp SPR minimap. Big thing, make sure this is set at 0 and 0, because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be mapping the entire room, the entire room, and if you look here at the dimensions of this room, it's 5120 by 2880, that's a pretty big room. So we need to make sure that when this mob character is all the way here at 4640 by 2528, it's going to map that location to the smaller version over here, see? Because this map is nowhere near that size. So we're going to be doing that in all kinds of calculations where we take the percentage of this one to that one into account. So once that's imported, then we're going to create an object called Object Minimap. Right over there. We're going to import that Minimap sprite. Then we're going to create a few events here. First, a Create event. And in the Create, we're going to set up some variables that we'll be using uh, throughout the existence of this object, such as its current X and Y, because we want that to be static. We also want the Mini... Uh, map percentage so let's start with X and Y. X is going to be remember this is where we want it to be on the screen so my width is 1280 by 720 that's going to be our, our width so I'm going to say 1280 minus sprite get width yeah I'm going to get the width of sprite minimap okay and I kind of want a border of 7 between the uh, between the edge of the border. So there's going to be like a slight border there. That's going to be cool. Um, then our Y, this is just going to be 7 from the top of the screen. 7 pixels down. So it's 7 pixels from the right left, uh, the right hand side of the screen and 7 pixels from the top. And then our minimap percentage, this is going to be the, you know, the ratio between the actual game room and this little sprite that we've, uh, that we've brought in. So again, we are getting the width of this little sprite. And we are simply dividing it by room width. Because the height will be the same ratio, so that's great. Getting the width of the sprite, and we are dividing it by the actual room width. So this will give us that 30%. It will give us 0 0.3. That's going to be our minimap percentage. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab the coordinates of our player, of our mobs, and we're going to times it by that 0 0.3 to get, you know, the ratioed version of it. And we're just going to plot those coordinates onto the sprite. Pretty cool. So once that's time, we say OK. Add event. Draw. Draw GUI. Remember, we want it. On, we want it to be on everything. Don't want this to move around. Drag in some code. So, firstly, we need to actually draw this minimap. I'm going to use uh, draw sprite extended sprite minimap because we want um, a sort of transparency. So, we want to edit this alpha value right over here at this bottom. So, sub image zero x and y is going to be the x and y that we worked out earlier. Our scale over here is going to be one and one because it's already scaled down. Rotation is going to be 0. Our color is going to be C white. That's the same. Alpha 0.7. So that's 70% transparent. Just like that. Once that's done, we need to grab our player's coordinates and convert them into minimap coordinates. That's what we're going to be calling the minimap coordinates from now on. Okay, so remember that. So player x and player y equals. And here we're going to say object player dot x object player dot y. So we're grabbing the x and y of the player. And all we're doing is we're timesing it by this variable mini map percentage. So if our you know if our coordinates was one thousand one thousand, that's the x and y, it'll times it by this ratio here. And if the ratio is thirty percent then we'll end up with three hundred by three hundred. That'll be our new coordinates which will be drawn to this minimap 
instance. Now, once that's done, I also want to draw this player sprite to that minimap. So draw sprite ext again. Sprite is going to be sprite player. And we're going to have the subimage of zero. Now, here's something interesting x and y. So remember, we set the x and y of the minimap at zero, zero, top left. Because remember, our game room is going to be sorted out from the coordinates of zero, zero, right at the top. So if you're looking at this, try picture this as the actual game room and we're putting down stuff. That's zero, zero, all the way down here is our maximum x and y. So when we convert that player's actual position in real game pixels to the minimap, which is 30% size of those pixels, we are going to add it to the origin, which I've placed there at zero, zero and then it'll put it where we need to go. Okay, so here we say x plus player x, y plus player y. Very simple. And then here it's asking us for the scale. The scale is going to be minimap percentage. We want this player to be drawn in the same scale as the map's drawn, so 30% if that's what it is. And then we also want to make sure that we're grabbing object player dot image angle we want everything in real time. We want the player to rotate when he's rotating. You know, the player's looking at this minimap as if he's getting a bird's eye view of the entire game room. Okay, so our color is C white because uh, we don't want that to change. Now, oh, this is interesting. You could differentiate between friendlies and enemies, and then on the minimap, you can just draw red, you know, versions or green versions of them. That's really awesome about this. And our alpha is going to be the same here, 0 0.7. Make sure that it's the same transparency as the minimap itself. So that in actual fact is the player. If we had to play it now, we'll see our player moving around, but we won't see any of those other mob characters. So now let's add those. So we're going to say with object remote player, that's what I've called them, because I'm kind of simulating a multiplayer experience here, and in my case I like to call every other player remote player, because we're just getting what they say they, they're doing. You know, We're not actually controlling them in any way. So here we're going to get two temporaries, because remember, we're working with every remote player. That's what this does, with every single instance of object remote player. So I don't want to save any of these variables once this step event is finished. So that's going to take up a lot of memory. So every time it works out something, it's going to delete these variables. It's going to be really, really efficient. So here we say remote x and remote y, whoops, y equals, and then here you've got to say x and y. So we grab the x and y, remember we're in the scope of this current object remote player that it's dealing, dealing with, x plus, now if we want to jump out of the scope, we have to use the other, we have to put other in front. So we're going to jump out of the scope for a second, and into the scope one up, which is in actual fact is the minimap. So we're grabbing other dot, this, bam, and this is actually a time, sorry. Remote x equals x times other minimap percentage. So we're grabbing this value, see? And closing that off, and copy, paste it, just like that. Then we're going to draw this current instance of object remote player. So we can actually grab line 6, put it there. And here we're going to say sprite index. So we're drawing whatever sprite the remote player has. Here we are giving its image index. Very abstract, it doesn't matter what that player has, that's all going to be drawn. And here we just replace player x and player y with remote x and remote y. Again, because we are calling a variable that does not belong to object remote player because we're in that scope, we need to use the other over here. And you put other prefix other dot minimap percentage. And then here we just say image angle, don't need player dot color, still see white, and our transparency is still 0 0.7. So that's pretty much it. That's how it's done. So look at all that. Make sure you understand how it works. Remember, we're drawing the actual minimap sprite that we grabbed out and cropped and cut out and added as a sprite resource. We are working out our player x and y's, you know, coordinates depending on the ratio and his current x and y coordinates. We are drawing that player in, and then we're cycling through every single object remote player, and we are getting their current ver uh, their current x and y depending on the scale of the minimap, and we are drawing that also. So it's going to do that for every single one. Okay, so now we've got to go into views. I'm going to show you how that works. So, let's jump into the game world. Now, with the way, with the transparency in that, you don't actually need a, you know, you don't need to port the entire game world to view. So what I'm going to do here, just to test this out, we're going to create a visible room, a visible view, and we're just going to tell it to follow the player, give it a 200 border before it scrolls, and make sure that this is 1280 by 720, because that's uh, 
the view I usually work with. Okay, so that's pretty much done. If we zoom out here, you can see there it is. It's starting here at 00, zero and the width is 128 by 720, and we're porting it to that same location as we move around. So we say OK, we say save. Make sure that in our game room, we are placing that minimap. Just put it over there. See, there it is. Boop. Uh, yeah, it'll move to where it needs to go. Save and play. Okay. So there we have it. We can see ourselves up there. Oh. Oh, uh, this is one thing. See, this is why we shouldn't give it a sprite resource. We must just draw that. Okay, we need to go back out here. Minimap, don't give it, sorry, don't give it a sprite there. So let's also make sure that we've placed our creatures. We have placed our creatures, so make sure that they are. Draw UI, make sure that we are using, wherever we use X to actually refer to the minimap, we've got to use other. Here we go. Other.x and other.y. See? We need to get the origin of the minimap and add it. You know, add the remote X to it to just, you know, situate everything correctly. Make sure we've got other in front of everything else that needs to be there. And we're good to go. This will work. So here we go. There it is. There is the semi transparent minimap. We've got our mobs and their very poor AI. I mean, this guy's already trying to prison break his way out of the map. But it's all working here. We are at these objects. We can't go through them. Notice how the minimap's working nicely. And if I put my mouse on the minimap, see, it's not making me look there because it's not like a window into another or the same room in a view, another view of the same room. So it doesn't in any way change what we're doing. If you wanted to create a sort of um, RTS where you can actually interact with the minimap to give orders to players or move to that location, you're going to have to take into account keep uh, clicks and then convert those back to, you know, convert up. So if I click here, then it takes the mouse click, sees how far away it is from the origin, times is it um, by the ratio again um, to get 30 times that size, and then it can put it on the main map, and then that's how you move around. Um, but from here, that's a, it's a small step to get to there. So that is how to do an, an actual proper minimap. Um, I can, I mean, if this is really what you wanted, that's as good as it gets. But if you want to know how to also do the other minimap where it's just porting the view, I can show you that in a second. Let's really quickly do so. Let's, let's go into that also. Go into the game world. We go into views again. We go to view one, view one, enable. Then here, all we're going to do is say, view in room. The width of the view is the entire game room, so 5120, and the height was 2880. So we take, we're saying, take the entire view of the room and port it to 403 and uh, 226. Support that entire room to a small little part here on the corner, right over there. And we're following nothing. And we just say OK, and you'll see what that'll do. Just like that. There we're porting the entire room to the spot. But yeah, if I put my mouse on it, see, he moves. Because <laughs> my mouse is now not over here in this view. It's over there, like way at the bottom right of the map on, the, on that view. So you got to choose if you want, you know, a semi-transparent minimap like this. A few lines of code and a draw event and... You can get it done, you know, just cut out that map. Print screen, cut it out, add as a resource, and draw your stuff on top of it. There you go, that's pretty awesome. If you're going for the, you know, drawing the entire map directly as it is in a view, go for the left-hand side one. Obviously, it's so much simpler, but if you put your mouse on it, obviously, you see, it's interfering with our actual game because it's we're, in effect, looking at the same room just in a closer view and a further out view. So I hope you found this tutorial educational helpful. If you have any questions on this, please leave me a comment. Um, thanks for subscribing. If you have any suggestions on further tutorials, because this was actually a suggestion from one of my subscribers, a big thank you for suggesting it. To be honest, I actually didn't think of this, and it's a big part in many top-down games. If you haven't subscribed yet, please feel free to do so. If you really like this tutorial and many of my other ones, please feel free to check out my Patreon campaign. Send me a few bucks through there. I really enjoy and appreciate your support. You'll have to excuse my poor AI. I mean, these creatures are really doing their own thing. But it doesn't matter. I didn't intend them to be perfect. There he goes. Look at that. Oh, he's turning around. Yeah. <laughs> so, again, thanks for watching.
please feel free to check out my Facebook page. I paste all kinds of updates on what's getting put onto this channel. You can find the resources for this tutorial right in the description. Give them a, uh, a download. It's always great to go through the project with me while I'm explaining stuff. It'll be a lot easier for you to understand and grasp the concepts. But, I don't know, if you want to download and fiddle around with it, go for it. That's pretty much why it's there. So, until next time, happy coding, and I'll see you then for another great game tutorial. Cheers for now.